Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will see use of previous and pick function with a real time example. I have this data where I have currency, date and exchange rate. This data will show you exchange rate of USD versus GBP. The source data has kept the records of exchange rate when it is actually changing. So if you see here the rate of GBP to USD is 1.22 on 1st of July 2022 and on 5th of July 2022 the rate change. So the rate is now mentioned here which is 1.21. So between 1st to 5th the rate is same means the rate of 2nd, 3rd, 4th July is 1.22. So you can see here the rate is 1.22. Same way up to 10th of July, the rate will be 1.21 and so on. So our source table is this and we need to create output table as this. Let's do this in click. So I will load data here. I'm going to load currency date and exchange rate here. And when I load the data at the front end, I will create table. At the front end, I will create table with currency, date and exchange rate. So first thing is we need to generate all the missing dates here. So here the missing dates are 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 11th and 13th and 14th. So all these dates we have to generate first. So we can use loop here. So first of all, what I will do, I will find out the mean and max date by currency. So here I will say load currency and let me write down this whole script inside another tab so that it will be visible and I will say currency and here I will say minimum of my date as mean date and maximum of my date as max date resident of my data table and because it is mean and max I have to use group by currency and here I will give this table name as temp date so this will give me minimum and maximum date by currency right now we have only one currency which is a USD so this table will be something like this so time date currency and we will get mean and max as a number here so to convert them into a date we need to use formatting function date hope you have already gone through date and date has formatting and interpretation function i have already created videos so you can go through with that So now we have minimum date is 1st of July and maximum date is 15th of July. So between these two dates, we need to generate all the dates. So that we can do by loop function. So here I will do the preceding load and I will say load currency and I will say minimum date plus iteration number minus 1 as temp date while this loop less than equal to max date if you don't know how this works i strongly recommend you to go through calendar videos which i which i have created a long time ago the link of that is given in the description section and now i will load this so we will have we don't have now minimum and maximum date but we have currency and temp date so these are the dates created and to check them properly i will use the date function here so it will be properly converted formatted to the date format so now we have generated first to 15th now we need to merge these two table as soon as I will merge these two tables, so to merge these two tables, I can say concatenate data. And here 
instead of temp date i will make it as a date proper date which is the same as this so we have currency we have date action date we will get as a null as soon as i will concatenate this data we will have duplicate lines here the lines which are going to duplicates are those where we actually have the exchange rate so you can see we have exchange rate for five lines so these lines will get duplicated so we have to ignore those lines so we have to ignore 1st of july 5th of july 10th of july 12th of july and 15th of july how to do that what i will do is first of all i will create one field here i will say currency and date as key field and this key field i will use here so i will say here load star where not exits my key field and this key field is actually something like this here and date whenever we will do concatenation of date field i usually prefer to use floor function so it will truncate all the uh, time portion here if it is there and now i will load this data and you can see now we are not getting all the duplicates lines so now we have generated all the missing dates and now our objective is to get 1.22 up to 1.22 for second third and fourth and 1.21 up to 9th of july so how we will get it so first thing is if i will write here so i will write here first final data i will say here no concatenate and here i will say load star resident of my data table and here i will drop my table data table and when i will load this it's not going to change anything everything will be as it is and now here first thing i will do here is i will make sure that the order by my data is order by date so that we will get the proper answer because previous and pick function also depends on the load order so if the load order is not by date then i have changed it here so still we are going going to get the same result now i will use here pick and previous function so i will say pick exchange rate as pick rate and just i will try to get the answer here so if i will at the peak rate here i'm going to get answer something like this so this is not the answer which we are looking for because we are because the peak function first load first line and it will give you null because for the first line obviously you will get the peak or previous as a null but for the second line it will give you the result of the previous previous row so the previous row result is exchange rate so we are going to get the data 1.22 so now the second row is loaded now for the third row it will again read the exchange rate so so exchange rate for the third row means the peak rate for the third row will be the exchange rate of the second row so second row exchange rate is null so we are getting null here so what we need to do here is instead of reading the exchange rate we have to read the peak rate so if i will use this and i will read this one peak rate then i will going to get null everywhere you can see we are getting null here so what is happening here so first thing is using the peak function you can reuse the same field which is getting generated while using the previous function you can't because previous function is reading data reading rows from the input table while pick function is reading data from the output table so here pick rate is generated and this pick rate we are also reading so how pick pick rate as pick rate is giving you null so let me explain you from excel file so first of all 
we are loading this and then we are loading peak rate so this is the first line so this is the first line and for this line peak rate will be null and now the second line is this so for the second line this is null and the peak rate means it is a reading peak rate the peak rate is reading peak rate of the previous line so peak rate for the previous line is null peak rate for the third line equal to peak rate of the second line so we are going to get null 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 here everywhere it will be null so how to avoid this one so first thing is if wherever we have exchange rate we need to consider peak rate as exchange rate so how to do this i will say here if not is null exchange rate means exchange rate is not null means exchange rate is there then i have to consider exchange rate as a peak rate otherwise if it is null then i will read the peak rate of the previous row and now when i load this you will see that we have got the exit output which we are looking for so what we have done if exchange rate is not null then use exchange rate as peak rate so this so exchange rate of 1st of july will be considered as peak rate exchange rate of 5th of july will be considered as peak rate 1.21 and so on and wherever it is null we are reading from the previous line so how this will work so first of all first this line will be loaded and we are we are saying that if exchange rate is not null then use peak rate as exchange rate now for the second line we are saying that this is null so we are saying that if this is null then then consider peak rate as previous line peak rate so previous line peak rate is 1.22 so now for the third one it is null so it will again previous line peak rate which is 1.22 now for the fourth again it will be 1.22 now for the fifth we have exchange rate exchange exchange rate is not null here so this exchange rate will be considered as peak rate and again and again for the next line it will be 1.21 something like this so this is how it is working so hope now you understand that how we can use peak function which is reading the output of the table means you can refer the same field which is getting generated as an output table if instead of peak i will use previous then it will not work because previous function cannot find the peak rate from the input table because peak rate is a part of output table not the input table the input table is having fields like currency date exchange rate and key field but not peak rate peak rate is a part of output table so we cannot use here previous so now you can see that how this data is loaded and we are getting the final output now consider the case where we have more than one more than one currency so we need the same output but here we have more than one currency so how we can handle this one so i will load now exchange rate i will load this table and this is example 2 so what i'm going to do here is i will say here example 2 okay so what i will do here is i will create another one and i will comment this one and here i will say example 2 and so we will go slow so first i will do this and here i will say exit script and before loading i will say here where currency len of currency equal to greater than 0 because you can see here we have many records so this will consider all the records so i don't want to load all this records i want to load only this many records this empty row will also get loaded so here so here i will load it and we should have only 15 lines so the 15 lines are this and now we have kept the same script and we will see 
what output we are getting here. So here I have to load this and I will say key and date field. So key and date field we have now duplicate line. So now if I will load this then the duplicate lines will be removed and now we will get same output as our first example. So now to get this one first thing I need to consider is the only order by date will not work here. So let me load this one. And if you try to see the output, you can see the peak rate is something like this. So you are getting some strange output because you have sorted by date. So once you sort by date, so the peak function will consider the exchange rate of previous row irrespective of the currency name. So this is not correct. So here if I will add row number here I will say row number as ID and if I will add this ID in this table so you can see from this one that okay uh, for this 2nd of July we are getting 101 and then here also we are getting 101 because this pick function is picking the exchange rate or pick rate not exchange rate it's a pick rate because we are using pick function and we are self referring this pick rate field so we are getting 101 which is wrong so what we have to do here is we have to sort by currency first and then date so now you can see here we are getting much better output so this is how you can use pick and previous function. The only thing now you have to do here is you have to drop exchange rate table, drop field exchange rate and you have to rename field pick rate as exchange rate. And now when I load this one and we'll remove this pick rate field so this is the output which we are looking for. Hope you understand now how to use this pick and previous function. I will show you one more example on pick and previous function. Till then, thanks and have a good day.